Hi, welcome to Tag Arcade. And in this tutorial, we are going to create a live system. So we're going to start with three lives. And if you get destroyed, you're pretty much going to go down to two, one, and at zero, it's going to be game over. We're also going to take a look at that glitch where if we restarted the level, uh, things sort of went dark. So if this tutorial helps you out, go to my website, www.tagarcade.com and click on this button on the top right hand corner. Okay, so I'm going to once again show you guys what the glitch was. Is when we were playing the game and we went ahead and got destroyed and hit play again, the scene sort of got a little bit darker, which was a little odd. And it actually turned out it's not a glitch within the actual programming. It's a glitch within the editor. So the interesting part is if we go into our build settings and make sure that our game is here, and we're going to actually build this for the Mac OS 60 Universal, I should say. Um, let's just call this, uh, well, let's call this game. Well, I'll say my game. <laughs> Hit save. And it's actually going to start building our project. Um, but yeah, when you go ahead and build the project and actually run the test game, um, it's not actually a problem because it actually does not turn gray. So once this finishes, you will see uh, it running firsthand. Okay, so let's go ahead and close this. Let's go ahead and start my game. And let's hit play. So made with Unity. So here's me firing. Okay, destroying some stuff. And when I get destroyed and hit play again, look, nothing is grayed out. Everything is just the right color. Uh, so I'm just going to hit Command Q to quit out. And yeah, even though the editor says it's grayed out, it doesn't happen within the game when you compile it. So let's just not worry about that because <laughs> it'll work out in the end. Uh, so what I want to do though is I want to create a live system. So the first thing I want to do is take my score text. I'm going to duplicate this and I am going to make this my lives text. Next, I'm going to take that. I'm going to move it down a little bit to about here and I'll say lives and make that three. Okay. Then I'm going to hit File and Save. So one of the bad programming techniques that we did in the last section is we created a class that does more than what it's supposed to do. So within the player controller, it's supposed to control only the player. But if we go into it, we found out in our last tutorial, we actually had it do a little bit more. We had it add points for, to the player score. And we actually had it control a button, which is really bad programming technique. Because of that, we're actually going to create a new script. And we're going to call this script um, game control. Once we do that, uh, we're going to create a new empty game object to hold that script. So I'll just call this game control as well. So I'll just name it up here, game control. And I'm going to make that at 0, 0, 0. Uh, sometimes you could put the game controller script on the main camera. Some people put it on canvas. Other people put it on event system. I personally like to create a new script to hold that. But it's up to you where you want to put the game controller. Um, so we're going to go ahead and open up game controller and we're going to copy some stuff over. So what I want to copy is if I scroll down, I want to copy these two. I don't want the player controller to keep track of the scores or to control the menu button of play again. So I'm going to simply cut this out and I'm going to paste it in game control. Okay. Now we've got a few things highlighted in red, so we forgot to get our initializations. So let's go back to player controller 
and get our initializations right here. Okay, let's go back to game controller and initialize our variables. Uh, once again, we need to be using Unity Engine dot UI. And we could just simply delete this one since we're not using it anymore. So file save, file save. So what else do we have in red? Well, we have our score in red. So let's go ahead and take our score. We'll cut this out, paste it again in game controller. Uh, we're going to get our score initialization as well. And we are going to paste this in here. And now, since nothing is in red, we should be good to go. So let's go ahead and save our game control script and our player controller script. And let's go back and make sure everything works properly, but it doesn't because we have error messages. So what is our error message? So within destroy enemy, uh, we no longer have the function add points for destroy enemy because we need a reference to our game control. So let's go ahead and say private game control game control. And I'm going to say game control, not game object, <laughs> game control equals game object dot find. Uh, let's see. And what are we finding here? Our game control is in here. We call it game control. So we're going to copy that. Go into here, paste, dot, get component, game control. No, not game object, game control. <laughs> okay. And I'm going to say game control dot add points for destroyed enemy. File, save. Okay. Now we're missing a symbol somewhere. Okay. Uh, where is my... Si oh, <laughs> I used the wrong brackets, if you look closely. Uh, it's supposed to be open and close parentheses. Oops. File save. And let's go back. And... Okay. Uh, Game Over GUI does not exist in the current context. Oh, because we have all these things in here under the destroy player. Um, okay, so let's cut all this. So we're going to cut. Actually, um, and go into game control and say public void player destroyed. And we're going to paste in what we just cut. So now, since we cut that, we actually need to g build the reference for our game control. So, because I'm lazy, I'm going to go into my destroy enemy script. Going to copy, paste game control in here, go back to our enemy script, copy the game control initialization, and paste it into to our player controller. So now I could just say game control dot destroy no oh, player destroyed. I love autocomplete. So file save. So does that take care of all the error messages? Of course not. That would be too easy. Um no ex what? No extension method player destroyed of type game control can be found. What do you mean? That player destroyed. So let's go into our game control. Player destroyed. Yeah, that's good. So what? Oh, did I accidentally do... No, game control. Game control. Yeah, that should be fine. What I didn't do is file save game, game control. There we go. So game control, I forgot to save the script.
Now, is that fine? You're good? You're good. Okay, so let's go our game control and we have to reassociate our stuff. So, score text has to go for score GUI. Game over has to be for game over. Um, play button has to be for play button. Play again GUI is our play again text. Okay. Now hit file play. Or not file play, but just play. Now, let's go ahead and destroy an enemy. I get 10 points. Boom! I get destroyed. That works. And my play again button does not work. Okay. So let's go to our play again button. Let's go down. So we're missing a reference. So we're going to copy, or not copy, but drag game controller in. And we're going to game control and play again. File or scene save. <laughs> but yeah, file, save scene. And let's try this again. Let's go ahead and get destroyed. We'll try play again. And here we go. In our shadow world. Oop. Anyway, so we noticed that when we got destroyed, our lives didn't decrease. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, all this actually pertained to a game over scene. So we actually don't want to do a game over right away once our, our player's destroyed. So we're just going to say public void game over. And going to copy these in. So we're going to cut, paste. And we're just going to say lives minus minus. But our lives are not defined yet. Great. OK, so let's go ahead and go private int lives. Our lives is going to equal 0, or not 0. <laughs> we're going to have three lives at the start of our game. So we're going to say lives minus minus. And let's see what happens. So we file save. We're going to hit play. And now let's get, go ahead and get destroyed. So we got destroyed, but our lives did not decrease. Also, when we get destroyed, we need to recreate the player. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So what are we going to do? First, we've got to update the lives. So we need a reference to our lives. So I'm going to copy you. I'm going to paste you in right below. And I'm going to call you text GUI. Now we're just going to copy you and paste you in here. And we're just going to rename you Lives GUI. Is it Live GUI? What did I call you? I called you Text GUI. Why did I call you Text GUI? <laughs> lives GUI. Okay. So we're going to say Lives GUI. Um, text equals lives and we're going to say lives to string. Okay, File, save. So let's just test that first part. Let's just make sure our lives get decreased. And boom! Um, we have not... S we have a null reference here and my null reference pertains to my lives because I didn't set the lives GUI. Okay, fair enough. So my life text is going to be here. So I dragged in my life's text. Let's try this again. File play. Or I, I don't know why I say keep on file play. Let's hit the play button. And we have one life. <laughs> Interesting. So we started with three, and I guess we got hit like multiple times. So we had one life. Okay. Uh, so what we want to do is we're going to say if lives is greater than equal to zero. then we have to um, create player. Okay. Else, 
else it's game over okay makes sense right we have to create the player so let's go ahead and go to our player controller and we destroy a player so let's go ahead and create the player so public void create player so within our player controller we created a script or a function called create player so our game controller needs to be able to find our player controller. So what we're going to do is we're going to say private void, not, pl not void, uh, player controller, player controller. And we're going to say, uh, do we want to do game object dot find? You know what? I'm just going to call this public. And in here, I'm just going to drag in my player sphere. So that's the thing about programming. We could just drag and drop the references if you want to do it this way, or if you want to do it in code. We could have so did a game object dot find player sphere dot get component um, player controller. So it's up to you how you want to code this. Uh, we're going to hit File, Save Scenes, and here we're going to say Player Controller dot create player. File save. Uh, so let's jump back to our Player Controller, and to create our Player Controller, we're going to do two things. One, we are going to enable this to true. And two, we are going to move the player controller, or our player, back to 0, 0, negative 17.3. So we're going to say this dot transform dot position equals uh, new vector 3, 0, comma, 0, comma, negative 17.3. File save. So let's go back and we have some error message. Uh, so, oops, let's look at the error message. Uh, so float, 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 can I convert double to float? Okay. So we have a double, our decimal point number, so we actually have to put F for uh, float. Okay, so let's go file, save. And now, when you hit play, it should be able to play. So here it is. I get to destroy some stuff. And if I get destroyed, I come back into the center. Destroy. Boom. And that's it. Let's see. Whoa. Why am I... I'm just floating away. That is weird. Okay, so let's go ahead and pause you and what's happening so let's see where's my player spheres over here and yeah when I get destroyed my player sphere is right here my rest of the scene is here so it looks like um, gravity no oh, I'm going all to the right so it looks like gravity velocity and all of that is being applied to when I get shot. So we don't want the physics engine to take over. So let's go ahead and freeze our rotations along with our positions. So let's go ahead and file, let's go ahead and hit play, get destroyed, and already, oh, what? My bullet is going sideways. Why is my bullet going sideways? Okay, let's try that again. There you go. Oh, I know why my bullet is going sideways. So, the bullet is based on my orientation. So, let's go zoom in here. 
So if I take my player sphere, and let's just rotate a little bit. So it's a sphere, so you don't really see the rotation. But I'm going to rotate it a little bit. Uh, so if you look up here, I've actually rotated about 42 degrees. So if I hit space bar, it's still going forward. But now my left and right isn't working. Weird, so how come before I wasn't, I was shooting sideways? Okay. Hmm. Let's experiment one more time. Get destroyed. I'm still shooting forward. Uh, okay. Get destroyed. Still shooting forward. That was a weird glitch. Now if I get destroyed a third time, I am... It's still not game over yet. Uh, there we go. Yeah. Oh, I'm getting destroyed multiple, multiple times. That's weird. Okay. So the reason why I'm still getting destroyed is because I still have a sphere collider. And a sphere collider is what is used to detect whether or not a collision is happening again. So what I should do is, when I get destroyed, I should turn off my sphere collider. So if I turn off my sphere collider here, you could see the explosion stopped. But if I turn on my sphere collider, boom, boom, I'm going to get destroyed, and my lives are being decreased. Okay. So, for one thing, let's go back to our game controller. And it's not when lives is greater than or equals. It's when lives are greater than zero, you recreate the player. But if your lives are at zero, it's game over. And when I get shot, what should I do? I sh first have to create a reference to my sphere collider, which is called sphere collider. How convenient. So we're going to say private sphere collider. And I'm just going to call this collider. So collider equals get component sphere collider. And we're going to say collider. Yeah. Okay. Collider dot um, enabled equals not true, false. <laughs> we want to turn off the collider. And only when we are in our new position, we could enable it true. But I noticed that uh, if we do that, uh, what if we materialize like in the middle of the space and a bullet comes down and immediately destroys us? So maybe we want to create some sort of invincibility state for when we spawn the player. So let's go ahead and create an invincibility state. So in order to create the invincibility, we got to um, use what is called uh, wait for seconds. Uh, so what that means is we're going to create the player, wait about one second, and after one second pass, we let the player be able to be shot again. And if you're going to use that, uh, whenever we tr try to wait for one second or wait for any numbers of seconds, we have to use a coroutine. So we have to use the function start coroutine. So since I forgot how to declare that, let's go to our scripting reference. And we're going to say start coroutine. So let's go ahead and look at mono behavior start coroutine. And the one that I forgot is right here, our function call. So we're just going to copy you and go back to our script. And here, we don't need any variables in our function call. Um, and we're going to say wait to, uh, I don't know, what should we call it? Wait to get damage. I don't know. I don't know. I don't like that. Wait to get damage. 
uh, well, wait or start temporary invincibility. <laughs> you know what? Call it whatever you want. <laughs> so we're going to cut you, cut, paste. And now we got to use the wait for second script. So let's go ahead and back to our reference. And we're going to copy you because we need the wait for seconds portion of it. So we're going to go back to our script. And maybe we're going to wait for one second. So now we're going to say start coroutine. And we're going to call this start temporary invincibility. Okay. So once we start invincibility, we wait for one second before we can get shot again. So file save. Gonna hit play. Right? Play. So Oh no, I get shot. I'm invincible, so I can't get shot again. Ooh, I get shot again. And again. So much for my invincibility. And game over at negative one. Something tells me I didn't save scripts. Uh, so file, yep. Yeah. I'm going to say save all. So let's save all our scripts. Let's try this again. Play. So, destroyed, destroyed, destroyed. Oh yeah, live zero. I get to play again. I don't know, was... go. Yeah, so I was invincible for about a few seconds. Uh, so, here, yeah, just to, I guess, stress the point. Let's make this two seconds. Maybe I want to be invincible for two seconds. So, we're going to hit play. Boom, I get destroyed, and yeah. I'm invincible for two seconds before I can get hit again. Okay, so let's make sure everything gets reset properly. So 10 points, 20 points, 30 points. Get destroyed. Ooh, invincible. Destroyed. It destroyed. And now when you hit play again, we get reset, zero, lives three. And you get to play again. Yay! Uh, so that's it. Um, if this, like I said, if this like gray th uh, scene on replay sort of annoys you, just know that if we hit build project, um, if we build the project and we play it, yes, we'll replace it. Uh, that problem doesn't occur. So, if this tutorial helps you out, like, subscribe, and all that other good stuff. And until next time, have fun and keep on creating games while I, while I go ahead and play my game. Where's my game? Come on. Oh, here's my game. Let's go play. Whoa, this is going so fast. Oh, I get destroyed. I got two lives left. Oh. Okay, till next time. Take care.